money out of nothing. How does the Fed create money out of nothing? It's a four-step process. But first, a word on bonds. Bonds are simply promises to pay, or government IOUs. People buy bonds to get a secure rate of interest. At the end of the term of the bond, the government repays the bond plus interest, and the bond is destroyed. There are about $3.6 trillion worth of these loans or bonds at present. Now, here's the Fed money-making process. Step one, the Federal Open Market Committee approves the purchase of U.S. bonds on the open market. Step two, the bonds are purchased by the Fed from whoever is offering them for sale on the open market. Step three, the Fed pays for the bonds with electronic credits to the seller's bank, which in turn credits the seller's bank account. The trick is that these credits are based on nothing. The Fed just creates them. Step four. The banks use these deposits as reserves. They can loan out over 10 times the amount of their reserves to new borrowers, all at interest. In this way, a Fed purchase of, say, a million dollars worth of bonds gets turned into over $10 million in bank accounts. The Fed, in effect, creates 10% of this totally new money, and the banks create the other 90%. To reduce the amount of money in the economy, the process is just reversed. The Fed sells bonds to the public, and the money flows out of the purchaser's local bank. Loans must be reduced by 10 times the amount of the sale. So, a Fed sale of a million dollars in bonds results in $10 million less money in the economy. So how does this benefit the bankers whose representatives huddled at Jekyll Island? First, it totally misdirected banking reform efforts from proper solutions. Second, it prevented a proper debt-free system of government finance, like Lincoln's greenbacks, from making a comeback. The bond-based system of government finance forced on Lincoln after he created greenbacks was now cast in stone. Third, it delegated to the bankers the right to create 90% of our money supply based on only fractional reserves, which they then loan out at interest. Fourth, it centralized overall control of our nation's money supply in the hands of a few men. Fifth, it established a central bank with a high degree of independence from effective political control. Soon after its creation, the Fed's great contraction in the early 1930s would cause the Great Depression. This independence has been enhanced since then through additional laws. In order to fool the public into thinking,